Hello everyone. Well, lots to talk in this video. Well, I'll try to make it short. Starship rolling out for the first static test. SpaceX secures LA construction facility in Port of LA. And top it all, SpaceX gives us schedule of upcoming Starlink launches. Potentially also including services and cost to the consumers. SpaceX is to test Starship SN1 in a static test within days from now. SpaceX has rolled out first flightworthy Starship SN1 on which SpaceX hopes to perform first static test on now much improved Starship design within next few days perhaps. Before that can happen SpaceX will need to integrate sole Raptor rocket engine process that will take a few days with very likely Starship SN1 static test to follow on within days of that event. When would SpaceX perform first static test or when this could happen? Well, SpaceX did issue a notice and request from the county for closure of Boca Chica Road from 29th of February. If there are delays on 29th, SpaceX could seek for alternative date, which also indicates SpaceX has full intention of testing the Starship sometimes during this period. It could be late February or early March. SpaceX is prepping Starship SN1 for several critical tests. It must pass before it can be deemed ready for liftoff. Starship SN1, which is about 70% complete if we look at the ship right now, will perform tests sometimes next week. And I hope to do a live stream of that. Starship SN2 is still a few weeks behind and tests on Starship SN2 won't be performed before April. Starship SN1 will undergo a series of static tests over coming weeks with a single Raptor engine. One of the tests will be cryo test and tank pressure test, both of which will test for any leakage and tank pressure. Elon Musk hopes to achieve 8.5 bar tank pressure, which is about 40% more than actual requirement. The chances are, and we must not discount this, that Starship SN1 might also suffer failure if SpaceX pushes it beyond 8.5 bar pressure in an effort to establish critical limit and point of failure. If that happens, and there is a good chance of that, SpaceX will move on to Starship SN2, which is currently under construction, only a few weeks behind Starship SN1, and should be ready by end of March. SpaceX intends to test both Starships and perform flight tests. However, as I mentioned earlier, Starship SN1 will have only one Raptor rocket engine integrated. This will allow SpaceX to perform a number of static tests. The Starship SN2, on the other hand, will see integration of three Raptor rocket engines, indicating SpaceX will actually perform flight tests with Starship SN2 rather than Starship SN1. This is also the reason why SpaceX is building two Starships concurrently. Why sudden rush to test Starship SN1? Well, SpaceX planned to test Starship in March. However, the progress on Starship SN1 and SN2 was so remarkable and rapid, it is logical for SpaceX to test new design before the company commits to what is a multi-billion dollar strategy of building at least further four or five Starships this year. I know this might sound unexpectedly low number, considering SpaceX, well, Elon Musk wants 1,000 Starships by 2030. The fact is, 2020 will be spent on testing Starship and full-on Starship tests, which I expect will happen in August, October timeframe, would mean that any work on new Starship might be premature. Until this design is finalized, any technical issues solved and Starship is truly ready for first launch sometimes in late 2020. Starship SN1 is unlikely to fly beyond initial hop test, and if SpaceX performs Starship SN1 to complete destruction, then it will definitely never fly. The speed at which Starship SN1 and SN2 are being built indicates to me at least SpaceX can build at Boca Chica facility alone number of Starships, perhaps as many as 8 or even 10 per year as facility is now. Once the facility expands to encompass whole area as envisioned in the expansion plans, SpaceX could roll out two Starships each month 
Which brings me to other relevant news. SpaceX plans to open its Los Angeles manufacturing base, where it plans to build Starships, along with a facility in Boca Chica and eventually at Roberts Road SpaceX facility in Florida, SpaceX will be capable of building 100 Starships per year. I know for some of these it might sound crazy and all honesty, it is a bit daft, but I can see Elon Musk's logic. And if you're going to establish a permanent human colony on Mars, in very short space of time, you got to think big. SpaceX Starlink schedule perhaps is not that difficult to follow. SpaceX plans to place 1,440 satellites into low Earth orbit. Each Falcon 9 can place around 60 Starlink satellites. This corresponds to around 24 Falcon 9 launches in 2020. SpaceX could start providing Starlink service in North America only, at first towards the end of this year, with service spreading to other markets across the globe, as more satellites are launched to cover the globe. SpaceX hopes to launch 42,000 satellites, covering most of the planet, with high-speed satellite broadband. Speed and latency of Starlink broadband may become clear in real-world use, but a 2016 filing with the FCC or Federal Communication Commission suggests it would reach speeds of up to 1 gigabyte per second and latency between 25 and 35 milliseconds. Musk stated in May 2019 that the team is aiming for sub-20 millisecond latency initially with sub-10 milliseconds over time with much greater consistency than terrestrial links. These quick response times are ideal for video games that require fast reflexes. In a real-world test, SpaceX tested a relay service in 2018 with the United States Air Force, reaching around 610 megabytes per second with the two test satellites. Starlink pricing is still unclear and the company is remaining tight-lipped. However, it has dropped a number of clues that could reveal more about Starlink monthly cost for its eventual launch. And no, Musk has already dismissed the idea that it will be free. The monthly cost will have to be competitive with other services. Gwen Shotwell perhaps gave the closest indicator on the price when she asked CNN in October 2019 if anyone is paying less than 80 bucks a month for crappy service. So the service might be highly competitive in US, priced below $80 per month. However, in the European Union, where service and provisions are excellent, is most SpaceX can hope to achieve. Then there is a connection kit. Musk suggested in 2015 this would cost between $100 and $300. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description.